Hello. <coughs> uh, I'm reading uh, The Only Planet of Choice. I am starting the subsection The Other Side of the Coin. Uh, page 208 is chapter 16, which I have read already. And we are coming now to chapter 17, which is entitled Preventing Disaster. These are mainly question and answers, uh, which is transcribed by Phyllis Schlemmer. Uh, and it was published in 1993, and this is mainly in the 70s and 80s, and I think it's of great interest. And it hasn't been done yet. <coughs> Chapter 17. Preventing a Disaster. The main issue here is, what we need to recognize is our situation on this planet, and then assume total individual responsibility for the outcome. The transmissions concerning the Gulf War and its effects are still relevant, for Tom shows us meditation techniques and demonstrates the use of the power of thoughts for good or ill. Tom, do you understand that if the awakening comes in its own time, there is total destruction, and if it comes with acceleration, then the world can be saved? Those of you who have visualized acceleration have begun the acceleration. What you must completely and totally understand is your power. When you negate your power and your ability to bring change, then you negate the universe and who you are. And you negate, negate us. So what has begun, this was 1981, is the, is the dedication to begin the process so it is like a giant cannon that shoots out its bolt and it is going in great rapidity. Now, we do not wish it to fall to earth too quickly, do you understand? But it must continue and know also that there is more fanaticism now, but that it is slowly being dissipated, yes? John, questioner. Is it that fanaticism has to come out to be purged, that it couldn't be suppressed, it had to be released? Tom, the most important thing is for you to be released, for in the suppressing it then grows more violent, yes? Irene, but isn't it also true that as we move forward, those that oppose Tom, are moving forward towards you, yes. Irene, and there are, and they are attempting to do whatever they can to maintain the balance on their side. Fanaticism is only one of the tools that they are using, Tom. That is correct. John, concerning the opposition, the others, and the rules, that govern their behavior. It seems to me that it is almost an arrangement that if we can get ourselves unified and have clarity of purpose towards the positive, the energy of that unification can bring results and that's something that the opposition have to honor. Is that true, Tom? That is correct. John, good, that helps me understanding, Tom. And also to remember that any of your strengths can be used against you by the opposition. Therefore, it is important to be clear with yourself. For example, if there is a problem with ego, it is perfectly permissible to say, here's a problem. It is suppressing it that creates the error. When coming to understanding of who you truly are, are there would be an elevation in yourself. Now, if in that elation you begin to be fearful or appearing stupid in the eyes of others, then you will negate the joy in identifying who you truly are. This is how the opposition can use your strength. Therefore, accept that it is understandable to be in joyfulness when you come into yourself. Identify with it 
and the feelings of stupidity will disappear. Do not waste your time worrying if you will be considered in error. If you participate in your life correctly, you will not be viewed in error. Do you understand? John. Yes, thank you. Now, at this time, 1985, we feel that there is a ne negative reaction as well as a positive movement on Earth. What is your assessment? Tom. When there is a movement in forwardness, all that was wishes to remain as it was. That is an element within a portion of humankind for fear of not knowing the future and also not wishing to give up the known factor. Therefore, you should have that as aspect of negativity. You also have the aspect of negativity from those that be in power, uh, that wish to maintain control and manipulation over others. However, in our feeling, we see that it is but a remnant that appears to be holding firm. Know this, that when its life is being threatened, this remnant maintains a stranglehold. Now come some questions related to our improved understanding of the ecological balance on Earth. John possible for us to generate sufficient energy on this planet for the use of the equipment that we need without the use of potentially destructive things like nuclear power. I mean, are there not natural resources of energy that we can use to perform this job? Tom, this planet eats itself. John, I don't understand that. What do you mean by that remark? Tom, the peoples upon your planet eat up your planet in depleting its resources. John, but if we turn to the sun and wind, there are... Tom, your sun is a source of nuclear energy. John, what I'm getting at really is that there is quite a strong movement for the elimination of nuclear power, power stations in various countries. And I'm wondering whether you see in any particular danger from nuclear power stations. I'm thinking of things like the Three Mile Island accident and so on. Tom, we will explain. If you generate power with a natural source, this is the best option to serve resources. But there are ways and means that nuclear power may also benefit humankind. It is only the introduction of the destructive nature of it that it is great danger. There are means and methods of using it without destruction and with safe containing and refining of waste, yes? All things invented, all things brought into existence have value if applied and modified properly. Mickey, how could the nuclear waste problem be solved? Tom, we will ask Altia. That it may be put to use as a source and form of energy also. It is just that your scientific community have not attempted to find a way except to isolate and bury it. It is an object of intensity, of heat, and it in eventuality could be transformed and purified. If you have the will to create the technology, you understand in automobiles there's a circuit that is closed uh, that purifies the pollution. Andrew, catalytic converters, yes. Tom. A similar kind of situation, Andrew, can, can it be developed? Tom, it would, be, it would lower the energy output, but it would not be contaminating. Ian, one key issue of the past has been technology for the planet. Do you foresee it as a necessity, as a, do you see it as necessary to transfer technology from your domains to our domains, or is it something that we can create ourselves now on this planet at this time in 1991? Tom, it is important that the creation be brought about on your plane, planet. It is important also to understand that those involved will be enlightened, as Edison was, by inspirational direct input. Do you understand? Jan, yes, that's very clear. Tom, 
we would ask you to continue your inner interest and forwardness. This planet was brought into its corruption by humankind. Therefore, it is important that humankind eliminates that corruption. And we say this also, not to hook you off, hook Israel, get you off the hook, Tom. That it is, that if it, it, if it were ultimately necessary, there would be invention. But then, you see, humankind could still revert to barbarism. For then they can say, we will do as we wish and we still shall, we shall, we shall be saved. Do you understand? Jan, yes. Tom, it is not good to give all the answer, is it? Mickey, once you spoke about hydrogen being an energy for the future, there's a person who is said to have invented a hydrogen engine using very little energy, oxygen and hydrogen being separated for combustion, creating mainly water as exhaust. Is that possible? Is that the way for the future, or would it be better to have solar energy to generate power? Tom, the utilization of all the natural elements that are non-pollutionary or serviceable, and also use of sunshine is of benefit. One method may function in some arenas, others in other arenas. Both have viability. You understand that there are many on planet Earth progressing in those directions, and that those inventors which are not pocketed by vested interests and have the future forwardness of planet Earth at heart will be those that will have the success. Others eventually will down tube. If you have a means of developing communication for encouraging forwardness, not to pollute remove and remove resources from the earth, or collapsing the earth, then we would ask each of you to be responsible to communicate this. Ian, am I correct then in saying that the key for an almost endless energy source would be magnetic energy? Tom, that is absolutely correct, yes. Ian, the big part is that if you have a permanent magnet, there is a constant force there that never gets smaller. Tom, you know that that is the force behind the transportation of vehicles from other domains? It creates a form that is like anti-gravity. John, I heard, I heard that. Counter to our thinking, the knowledge and understanding of gravity that we have at the moment is very poor, and that when we understand gravity, we will come to understand a lot. Tom, that is correct. As we explained that when you bring 12 together, that is four triangles, is it not? And when you use the electromagnetic fields, you know that humans have this energy field. You know that humans have this energy field. And we weave together a canopy. Then that is an energy that surrounds each person. Therefore it is healthy for you. Gravity holds you to the earth and those working with us on earth that understand this force of energy in sending prayer out and prayer meditation can affect a change. For the mind is an energy field that is also a vehicle. You would see it as a living, whirling, wiggling field. As each understands and really knows this, you can then weave a canopy similar to understanding the gravity field. It is a matter of shifting your mind, your mindness. It is a matter of shifting your mindness. Susan, is a pyramid something that is useful for working energy? Tom, the energy of the pyramid has yet not been yet revealed. Its secrets. By working together, the people may find this out. John, Tom, we humans seem to have fixated on large amounts of force and it seems that the future lies with weak energy, weak energy fields. Does that make sense? Tom, subtle, yes. The scientific day arena is now beginning to understand subtle energies, 
in a form for using for planet Earth and humankind. Also, they are beginning to understand the interlocking and connection of all with one unity. Yes? Ian. So in order to generate energy, at present we use brute force. However, there may be ways of using resonance and amplification at a very subtle level. Tom, that is correct, yes. Mickey, is it necessary to use large amounts of energy to separate hydrogen from oxygen, or can subtle magnetic fields separate them? Tom, the more smooth and subtle, the more beneficial. You have enough energy forms of destruction on your planet, do you not? Please remember also that joy and jello, which makes laughter, <laughs> are also subtle energies that bring about change on planet Earth. Once again, the Sino-Tibetan conflict weaves a thread through the proceedings underlining the points that Tom has already made. Irene questions. What's going on between the Chinese and the Tibetans? How important is it that this genocide be stopped? Because as governments move towards providing a balance in terms of ecology of the earth, and we are getting closer though, it's by no means solved yet, if the Chinese were allowed to wipe out the Tibetan, that is an imbalance that could never be balanced again. Is that not so? Tom, that is correct. What is of extreme importance is that humans of Earth must be made aware of the genocidal intentions to some governments on planet Earth. And what is of great importance is that you have a legitimate structure through which to make people aware, so there may not be any censorship of that information. You understand that? Irene, yes, absolutely. Tom, when you permit extinction through deliberate elimination, as it is with an extinct bird or animal, it can never be replaced. And then that portion of the matrix is missing. Then other forces can move in. Irene, I had never thought about that. I knew that if an imbalance is created, it could never be brought fully into balance again. But I didn't take it as far as you did. In that once an element is from the matrix, it allows other forces to move in and fill that part of the matrix. Is that what you're talking about, is it? Tom, exactness. Irene, so it's more than just disappearing. It's allowing the opposite strengths to take a larger, stronger place. Tom, that is correct. Then followed some more meditation instructions. In the nations of the USA, there are many petals of humankind. Petals of human petals of humankind. And what is of, what is of extreme importance is that people of that nation must now begin to understand that they do not live in isolation upon planet Earth. In your meditations, we wish you to expand them into a circle with the other nations. And a particular question relating to the youth of this planet was brought up. John, I have a question about the violence of the youth in this and other countries. In this and other countries. I'd like to understand more about this. I know they feel alienated. But can you explain more for the deeper understanding? Tom, they are the fruits of the war of Vietnam. They were those who died upon that soil on both sides. John, that's a very profound thing to get a grasp of. And I really appreciate knowing about that. What, if anything, can we actually do about it? It is just a process that has to work itself through or... Tom, as it was in the war of Hitler, and then it's passing. Except, in this case, there is even more violence, for the training was of a different kind. And many of the people who died also had many addictions. Back to the power of thought, it ne its negative and positive aspects they are discussing. Tom, understand this. In your physical world, there are those who wish to be known of as gods. And that energy of godliness creates devastation, for it devastates energies of goodness. John, are you talking about the expectation and the predictions of earthquakes in California that came from some of the psychics? Is that what you're talking about? Tom, that is correct. 
If they would but understand the devastation of their fear, their ego, their desire. Think upon this. When one, when one continues to perpetrate only scandalous negations of life, then do you wonder whence the earthquakes come? In your world, are there those that perpetrate goodness? John. Not so many. Now, without making any predictions, we've heard that there could be some further devastation in California. Is this a serious problem? Tom. It's a very critical situation because of the size of roaring within the earth and it is attempting to come back into balance. Would you be willing to meditate with us for the release of sizable geological pressure? John. Yes, of course we will do that. Oh, total and completeness? John, yes. Tom, we thank you. <clears throat> we must explain to you about planet Earth, its people and the energies bound within it and surrounding it. Planet Earth is a sphere. Imagine a ball of clay. Now, let us envision in that your ball of clay there has been a fracture internally and on some of the surface areas, but it has been kilned, so it is strong and it is firm. If that ball of clay would move upon its path as a sphere without any bombardment, it may continue for the time of eternity, of the universe, as it is. But if it should be in direct line with another body of great weight that could knock it, cause it to tumble or cause it to vibrate out of the normal path, then those faults could be weakened. As a whole, it has a great strength and it would maintain, even though there may be slight fuges of opening. By the same token, if upon this ball of clay there be insects that have antenna and if those antenna continually vibrate with an energy of negativity then that vibration in itself can weaken the ball of clay more than any external bombardment. So now we will attempt to equate the antennas of the insect to energies of humankind with thought for the thought is your antennae of the insect. Now, you have upon your planet Earth a great many people whose antennae vibrate with negativity. When that happens, it is stronger than with positivity. Because beside the vibration of negativity of thought, there is a system within the physical body of getting the adrenal and the endocrine system also in vibration. So this emanates out from the body. And this, in tune, may affect and weakens any structure. What humans fear, they may also bring upon themselves. But there are others who work diligently, knowing that this universe, and particularly this globe, were ordained to fulfill what was created for humankind's purpose. So, through their source of energy, they can negate the negative to take the pressure off the globe. In other words, when the globe is stretched to the point where it may weaken, then, with their antennae of positive energies, solidify it, they can, and bring it back to strength. When you're in California, or you, when you just think of it, send a thought for relief pressure within the fuges, without destruction. Major destruction may always be averted in time, if there be only twelve that believe in this, yes? We are in a crucial time. That time must now be utilized and developed for bringing forth awareness to people upon earth. Also, there are those that oppose the changes that come in many guises and speak in an effective manner that causes confusion. The way to tell the difference between these and those who speak truth is their method, their personal style of existence, their motive in speaking out. You have upon planet earth many that will be in confusion and also many who will say that what they may speak in truth is truth and that only that theirs is the truth. 
What must be made plain to humankind is that there are those who seem to break, speak truth, who understand little more than average human. And also it must be understood that there are those who write of beauty, who live in corruption. Each individual in relation to other individual, individuals is a universe within itself. The motive of purity of spirit and heart for the elevation of planet Earth and for the use of the planet Earth is important. We understand that planet Earth in its density, in its stick of the past and it's the energies of humankind has elements within the bonds. It binds it and creates areas difficult to release. But then when we speak to you of purity and motive of heart, we mean we expect not saintliness, for that is not useful, uh, for, for to be over perfected is also to be out of balance. For you live in a physical world. We mean only that your motive be pure for the betterment of humankind. To understand also the relationship of self with other humans and the purpose of going into forward evolution. Know this, Earth is in a critical situation and we know that maybe upon it dedicated souls who benefit it and bring it into elevation and transformation. However, in the attempt to bring it all of humankind forward, there will be those with whom it will not be possible. Therefore we say to you, do not carry with you guilt when those that you would wish to understand perhaps do not understand. For guilt is an energy that stifles and stops your own forward evolution. For in their time of, necessar of necessity, they will come to understand. Know this, that for those that are close to you, your energy is important. In your humility and your love for them, they will also come in forwardness. But we speak of those that you encounter in your daily life mm -hmm. and who do not understand. It is a natural desire when you are filled with joy and when you know that a joyful time is coming in future because of your dedication, to wish to impose your joy and understanding upon others. But this does not work. Other people must decide for themselves. They must decide not from your desire but from their own. There are many who speak of the ending of days. In the harmonic conversion, conversion which took place in August 1987, began the element that had, has pushed this planet into a forward position, as you would say. You have moved from neutral into gear one. It is bringing up the energy. There are still many around your planet who will think of the end of days. But what is now transpiring is that there are more who are beginning to understand that they are now in the shift for change. And they continue to, pl to pray to bless and to be in joy. It is a time of great change. It is a time of forwardness. And it is a time of preparation. The manifestation of your love and purpose mm -hmm. and energy for planet Earth is as a great magnification that spreads onwards and touches all. Humans have always looked to the stars and looked for where they came from, who they are, how they have developed. It is time now to bring forth these answers, to give hum information that can begin to make peace in the hearts of humankind and for them also to understand their purpose. You have wars upon earth. You have wars upon earth, religious disturbances, because humankind has not felt comfortable in the role that it has been placed in, it, in the role it has been placed in by religions. When humanity has the opportunity to view the essence of truth, that shift in consciousness will begin to bring about a peaceful order. Yes? And no, this also. There are those who have chosen to come to Earth who, 
as their service, will willingly cease to exist. As in the time of the Holocaust, as there are those in Africa, know that they are here, that know that they are here in service of the highest order that they have chosen, for they know there is no death. The outcome will be the end of all the destruction of planet Earth, of humankind, and Earth's true purpose will emerge, and also the decision of humankind in the universe. John, so personal responsibility is a very important fo focus. Tom, yes. John, and the transformation itself, we need to be able to demonstrate transformation through our individual nature. Tom, and to bring forward those individuals that are concerned about the future, about nuclear waste, the ozone layer, destruction of forests, they will also bring the transformation. The taking of personal responsibility, refusing to purchase a material that is destructive to the future. It is a small thing, but of the utmost importance. You have upon your planet five billion. Each one makes a difference. John, yes, the difficulty is in portraying this in a simple enough way for people to understand. If it is done with millions of people, it becomes too intangible. And I'm trying to get an idea of how, Tom. We did not say with millions. We mean that you need to show those individuals who realize the importance of taking responsibility and who do wish to take responsibility. Examples. If there be those who, will, who would wish to use terms and who would... Examples. If there were be those who would wish not to use items that destroy trees, then find recycling methods. There are many different ways. John, in the end, I suppose we have to look at what a transformed world would look like. You said before that it would be beyond our imagination. Tom, we hear so much from your planet that if everything is wonderful, it will be boring. That is not so, for in transformation there are continuous pursuits of understanding, learning and change. Humankind has been locked into the need for struggle. When it is understood that when there is freedom from want, freedom of time, imagine all that exists upon your planet that billions have not yet experienced. John, yes, so instead of trying to pull ourselves out of the negative, we will be drawn towards, forward, by the positive. Tom, that is exactly correct. You will have the experience of joy, of being, what you would call upon your world peak experience, will be a wave of life. Just begin, the rest will come. You have throughout your planet's pockets that are in dissension with each other, in the name of God. In your planetary situation, many humans have attributed God qualities to the beings of the universal civilizations. You are now in the days of the emergence of the spirit that was within the Nazarene, what you call the Christ. The acceleration of this energy bring forth, brought forth into the consciousness of humankind what is of the greatest importance. For when resolution is brought into being, then other pockets of dissension also will be in resolution. You are on the of tottering forward or backward. Now, we wish you to understand this. To those who have committed to transformation upon planet Earth, you have had that personal trials. You have had great deliberation within yourself. You have at times wondered if your forward direction could be sustained on all levels of your being, in your consciousness, in your personality and in your business life. There, will, there, there still exists among some difficulties in all three of those arenas. What is important is for you to view that you are coming forward and out of this and you have grown in great strength. Now those trials 
brought to you were not from us, but it was from the others, in the hope that you would forget your service and growth. But in staying upon your path and creating energy fields through meditation, you see the results of who you are. Do you understand what we say? John. Yes, I think we all have a lot of difficulty attributing any of these effects to our human humble efforts. Tom, in each of your culture, cultures, what is important is to understand that each of you is a complete unit, containing all that is contained within the universe, and that each of you has the ability to change the necessary arenas to bring planet Earth out of darkness into its rightful place. In your culture, you believe humbleness to be humility. It is time to understand that it is now permitted to accept yourself. John, yes, can you tell us what sort of practical resolution we are looking for? Avoiding conflict on one hand, but on the other hand, there are some major lessons to be learned, and it's difficult to see how that can be done without pain and conflict. Can you elaborate on that? Tom, when fanaticism begins to grow within a group, it is like a cancer. But it is in actuality a compensation for doubt in belief. Therefore, people must hold on to this belief, for to them it is their identity. Whether it will be with the Huwits, or with the Ismaels, or with those of the Nazarene, as it is also with the Hindu. John, the only thing is that are opportunists, and even though they make religious claims, they don't really represent that religion anyway. Tom, what you must evolve in your meditation is to send transformation energy for each to understand their humanness and their identity. And keep in mind also that the opposition is attempting to control, he calls them the others here in the other chapter. The balance is very fragile and there will be conflict, for in reality at this time, late 1990, the crescent arena is being used by the others, by being fed the energy of power, but that cannot sustain, you understand? There is a saying in your world that if there is fire playing, then there is burning. Is that not so? Oh yes, if you play with fire you get burned. John, yes, I suppose a major concern we have right now is for the hostages in Iraq. Can this be resolved without loss of their lives or what? Tom, you have several issues of great importance. You have those of innocence and you have the biological weapons, which is the most severe issue. Hussein, in his thoughtlessness, does not comprehend that the releasing of biological contamination stays in the atmosphere, contaminates and kills not only what it was targeted at, but become infused in planet Earth and will continue its malignancy. That can be devastating for the people of his own, but as well for the planet Earth, for the winds revolve around your world. This issue, issue is not only an issue between the Ishmaels and the tribes of Jacob, it is a world issue that the world has not truly viewed. John, many years ago, there was a discussion about landing in case of nuclear war and that you would never allow a nuclear war to occur because the devastation effect of that would go far beyond this planet. Is this biological weaponry of a similar nature and what are the implications of that? Tom, what is necessary is your commitment in your meditation so this meditative energy may then be utilized to blanket, to contain and to bury this danger. What we want you to understand is what we cannot is that we cannot have that backfire, for in backfiring it also contaminates you it also contaminates. You understand. Mm. Therefore it must be encapsulated neutralized and buried.
jump. Presumably, Altea's technology is very involved in this addition to our and all people's meditations worldwide. Tom, yes. It is those committed to bringing planet Earth to a solution of peace who have been maintaining, but as we have already said, 12 of hours are of vital importance. For you, that is the fusion, the knitting, the welding of the umbrella. Do you understand, John? Yes, thank you. The second problem that we are facing is the environmental problem, and there seems to be but a short time left for us to do something dramatic about changing it. Can you comment about that? Tom. Progress is being made. First, you must resolve this situation of chemical, primarily biological war weapons and create agreement worldwide by all parties on the elimination of all atomic weapons. For if that is chain reacted, then you do not have to worry about time. John, which areas can we give particular attention to? Tom, that is a vast question. You must first start with the seed to grow the food, is that not so? We ask that people on planet Earth meditate for bringing a resolution. It takes but one step. As you have seen in the time of moving of walls and talk, taking down of barriers, it can be resolved. True, there was a separation for months in advance by the energy of people. Know that there have been months of preparation in advance in your meditation for this situation, the Middle East arena. You must have the understanding that you have the creative will to create that situation. And what we would ask is that you do not judge any in that region. If it be of Ishmael, of the Huvets, or of the Nazarene, or anyone else, do you understand? For in your energy of power, you can also unbalance the balance. What is that called, John? You are talking about balance and impartiality. Tom, that is correct. Just permit your energy to flow and this will be the most difficult. Now you see, if you really understand how you are, all are laughing. Susan, can I ask about atomic energy? If it's possible to blanket it and contain it and bury it, can't it be used positively? Tom, all that is negative may be transmuted to positive, yes. We have come to a time of grave situation as well as an opportunity for great joy, 1990. It is time for each of you to remove self from self, to have great consideration in all arenas of your existence for the future of your planet Earth in preparation for the young humans to whom humanity is now giving birth, for you and they are the carriers and the future of Earth and in truth of the universe. We would ask you to be in great joy, an elimination of foolishness, elevation, elevational transformation of your self-centeredness, to expand to compassion, to walk in the glorification of earth and to take complete responsibility for your environment, to bring to your consciousness information that creates future betterment for your planet. Create a working network of information so that they then can dispense to others. Do not become zealous. Do it with conviction but in gentle compassion. But most important, those with children must build the structure within these children of great love for all creatures, for all life upon your planet. We would ask all that for your own betterment, as well as that of the planet, that there be daily meditation to find that time space to connect with us. For we are in truth available if you connect with us for re-energizing yourself. You may meditate on your own for 18 of your minutes, but we would ask that you do it in a time that you do not have haste. It will help in your own movement through your day as also in briefing 
and benefiting planet Earth. During your meditation, we will not speak, but we are there to infuse you with our love and joy. Keep in mind, always, that 12 people in commitment, completely and totally without ego, remaining in quietness about it, can bring great changes upon Earth. It is not possible to make that commitment, we understand that. That does not mean we love you less or honor you less, but if you should truly commit to the transformation to planet Earth, then it is a time for you to walk in sureness, in joy and in consciousness, to find the crystal within each one of eternal knowledge, internal knowledge and knowing that is what is necessary. Remember this, knowledge is not wisdom. Wisdom comes from within and cannot be taught and the person that is wise does not say that they are wise. One who is wise detaches, steps back, observes and knows when to go forward without the ego of, ex without the ego of exploitation. Most important of all is joy, kindness, compassion, to have charity, to have faith and to accept there is always hope for uplift, yes? John, my understanding is that there are many souls on this planet who are going through their evolutionary process, are not in service to the planet, while there are others who are in service, some of whom are conscious of it, and others who are unconscious of it. And then you also mentioned at one time that 98% of those that chose to serve don't carry out their chosen service although they may serve in some other way. Can you say anything more about that role of service, since we are all in that role in some way? Tom, that is correct. For out of every hundred who chose to return, who choose to return at this time to bring forth the Christ energy, the Messiah energy of the evolutionary state, two but will fulfill their choosing. For souls become entrapped in their ego personality or become competitive with the universe. They have internal knowledge of who they are and they misunderstand that it is not the ultimate reality and that is the beginning of the misunderstanding of their individuality. Upon planet Earth there are many that are in that state. Steve when I last talked to you some years ago, there was a crisis early 1980. And now there is one again, Gulf War 1990 to 91. While there has been in the interim a time when the world seemed to be getting much more peaceful, at the same time there has been an emphasis on greed, personality cults and selfishness. Is the human race at this stage able to cope alone or may it be possible that a direct intervention of some kind may be required in the present circumstances? Tom, what you see now is the thrashing of the tail of the negativity that knows it is on its way out, bringing forth cultism and fanaticism. There will be intervention if there were any people who would attempt to trigger the total destruction of planet Earth's environment. Also know that there surrounds the Earth many of what you call space beings from lower civilizations that have come here for they have destroyed their own planetary system and are looking for a place of survival in another. Planet Earth must survive. It is your energy that helps it to survive. David, is it appropriate to ask whether those space beings visiting us now are a threat to human civilization? Tom, some of them, yes. Council has that said that I must clarify. These are not a threat to the survival of planet Earth, but not all mean it well. As you are in a state of transformation, so are other civilizations that are coming forth. Yes, and that ends this chapter. The next one is Terrestrial Affairs and will be number 18 and I hope you enjoyed that. I'm just reading it guys.